Well, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to take a look at various reasons of why I can't flash my BIOS. Now, this is a very, very common thing. Uh, so, if you've come here and you've just done a Google search and this is the first video you found, don't worry, you're not alone. This happens to a lot of people, myself included. It's happened numerous times, so yeah, don't be uh, thinking that you've done something wrong necessarily, because you may not have done. There are lots of reasons why a BIOS won't flash, and hopefully, in this video, we're going to go through them step by step and do some kind of fault finding and kind of self checks that you can go through yourself just to make sure that you're doing everything as you should be and you basically have done what you need to do and there isn't something that you're missing out here. So I'm going to go through, there's various little segments, so I'll try and put timestamps in the video description as well so you can fast forward through, although I would suggest ideally watch the whole thing through just so you get some good grounding some basics and there might be something that you've missed already so let's start off with the first thing now the first thing is are you using the wrong bios file now this is actually really really common and happens so often i've done it myself recently in a video and you have to make sure that you've got the right bios for your motherboard just because a motherboard looks similar or it sounds similar or has a similar description it's unlikely that the BIOS is actually going to work on it. So you do have to be very, very careful on how you do that. And just to show you exactly what I mean, let's head over to the computer quickly and we'll take a closer look. Okay, so we've got some examples here. So I've just typed in MSI B450 Carbon Wi-Fi, very popular board in its time. So if we look through, if you do a search, it comes up the first one, B450 Gaming Pro Carbon Max Wi-Fi. So notice already, even though we've typed in here, the name of our motherboard, the B450 Carbon Wi-Fi, the first search result comes up with a different board. This is the Max Wi-Fi. If we scroll down a little bit further, then we've got the one we wanted. So this is the B450 Gaming Pro Carbon AC. So do make sure that you get the right one and the description is right. You can, if you want to, head over to the individual website and take a look, although the boards generally will look the same, especially if you're on an MSI board where they've just got the Max version because essentially there won't be any real physical differences on the motherboard. So just doing a visual check won't be enough. So make sure that the model numbers match up and make sure you've got the exact right name of the motherboard. Otherwise the BIOS won't flash. Another common mistake is this one here. So say for instance, we go for the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Elite AX V2, is if that isn't a long enough model number to type in anyway, we've also got revisions. So we've got revision one, 1.5, 1.4, 1.2, 1.3, and revision 1.1. So you have to be really careful that you make sure you get the right BIOS because all the BIOSes would be different for the different revisions because there's different hardware on them. So do make sure of that. If you're not too sure which revision you've got, if you check on your motherboard, there should be some silk screen writing in possibly one of the corners or just somewhere on the board it will say which revision it is. I think on most of the Gigabyte ones, it's kind of towards the top here somewhere, but potentially it could be by the RAM sticks. So you might want to search around, just make sure you've got the right revision. Alternatively, you can look on the motherboard packaging, and it should say on the barcode which revision the motherboard actually is. Now, while we're in this neck of the woods, let's go over something else which is actually um, quite problematic. And that is when you're doing a firmware update. So if we look here, if you went for the latest version here, so this one is dated the uh, 5th of the 9th, 2024 or the 9th or the 5th, whichever way you look at it. So that is the latest version. So if you've got an older motherboard or you haven't done a BIOS update in ages, maybe you're on one of these very old releases down here, there's a potential that you cannot jump straight to the newest BIOS. This is getting more and more common, especially on the AMD platform where the motherboards are lasting a lot, lot longer and they came out in kind of 2020. So you've got up to like four or five years, depending on when you're watching this, of BIOS release. So if you've got one of the first BIOS versions and you try to jump straight to the latest one, there's a strong chance that there was a tweak somewhere along the line where you actually need to do it step by step. So if you are having problems, rather than going straight to the very newest one, which again is not this one here, so this version uh, 2G1, so maybe just go back a little bit and maybe like 2D or 2D1 or 2C. So just go for a slightly older BIOS. That might not work, so you might need to go back even further. Ideally, if you know what BIOS is actually on your motherboard, you can take a view on it and say, well, okay, I've got version 25, so maybe I'll go to maybe 28, and then after that, then I'll go up to 2C1. Just do it in step upgrades. Generally, it was always okay to actually just go straight to the newest one, but we're seeing it more and more now because motherboards are lasting longer, you cannot just jump straight to the newest BIOS. Sometimes you can, Sometimes you can't, so it's definitely worth checking. 
So that's some really good things to check out. Another thing is to actually validate where is your motherboard actually from. So if you've got a PC which is built by a system integrator or like a big box manufacturer, such as the likes of Dell, iBuyPower, those types of things. So if you've got a big box PC, chances are, even though if you look inside and it says it's an MSI motherboard or a Gigabyte motherboard or ASRock or whatever it is, there is actually a strong chance that that actual manufacturer has made a tweak to the BIOS. So rather than actually having to go to the MSI site, being that it's an MSI board or whichever, you actually have to go to the manufacturer. So in the instance of Dell, where sometimes they have MSI boards or sometimes with like iBuyPower, they have ASRock boards, go to the actual manufacturer the PC's from. Obviously, if you look at your PC, there's a badge on the front and it says iBuyPower or PC Specialist or whoever it might be. Just have a look on their website, go to their support pages, and if they've got a BIOS actually in their support page, then that might be the one you have to use for your particular setup. So that, I think, covers the kind of have I got the wrong BIOS file section. That should encapsulate that pretty nicely. So the next part, we'll take a look at things more about the actual BIOS file itself once we're sure we've got the correct one. So one of the first things that generally goes wrong is people just download the BIOS and put it straight onto a USB stick. Now that is wrong. Most manufacturers, pretty much all of them, you have to download the BIOS. It'll be in a zipped or compressed format. So you have to use something like WinZip or Windows own unzipping utility, right click on the file and expand it or extract it to the full size. Normally you'll find when you extract a BIOS file, it'll be one of two sizes, either a 16 megabyte file or a 32 megabyte file. Again, depending when you're watching this and your specific board, yours may be slightly different, but if you've got a slightly unusual file size, that is definitely worth checking out. Now the next part of this as well is once the file is extracted, Generally, if you're doing an update from actually inside of the BIOS, i.e. you've put it onto a USB drive, you've booted your computer, pressed delete or F2 or whichever key it is to get into your BIOS screen, and you've gone into the BIOS flash utility, so you can see it on your screen, then generally that's gonna be okay. But quite often, if you're doing it as a USB flashback, so you're putting your USB drive into a bare board or on a system where the CPU doesn't work or isn't supported, you have to do what is called a BIOS flashback. So that normally entails putting the drive in, pressing a button on the back of the motherboard, and it will do its automated process. In that specific instance, the BIOS will need to be renamed a specific name. Now for MSI, it will be ms.rom. If you go to other manufacturers, such as Gigabyte, it will be gigabyte.bin, etc., etc. So depending on your specific brand, you will need to rename it. Now quite often when people do the renaming, they just delete whatever's there and type in the new name. Now you should get to the point where when you put the new bin or ex whatever extension it is for your board, when you type that in, you should get a message saying that you're changing the file system and Windows may not be able to recognize it. If it doesn't, it means that it's not taking your actual extension into account. So make sure you go into Windows Explorer and you make sure that you can see hidden file extensions. Let me show you what that looks like on the computer. So go into our drive here. So say for instance, we go into the MSI folder, just for example, we go on view and then go down to show and then you'll have file name extensions and also hidden items. So make sure file name extensions are visible. Otherwise you won't be able to rename your file correctly. So that covers pretty much the naming file structure. Again, if you're not too sure, go to your motherboard manufacturer or alternatively hit us up on Discord Tell us what motherboard you've got and we'll try and guide you through the process. So that takes us on to the actual USB drives themselves. Now, all USB drives aren't created equally and also there are some restrictions. So for flashing a motherboard BIOS, generally pretty much 99.9% .9 of motherboards will require that the flash drive is formatted in the FAT32 file system. Now FAT32 has a file limit, especially within Windows, of 32 gigabytes. So if you're using a drive, ideally you want it to be 32 gigabytes or smaller. Like I said earlier, motherboard BIOSes are normally 16 megabytes or 32 megabytes. So considerably smaller than these drives. So if you've got an old drive knocking around like a two gig or 120 megabytes, whatever it is, you should be absolutely fine with that and that'll be easier to format. If you've got a larger drive, like we've got this Lexar drive here, which is 128 gigabytes, you will need to actually create a smaller FAT32 partition on the drive. Now we've done a separate video on that, which I'm not gonna go through now. I'll put a link in the video description. So if you wanna see how to format a larger drive into a smaller FAT32 file system partition, then check out the link in the video description. 
Now the next part is also to the fact that if you've got a drive which you've been using for ages and maybe you've put it into a Macintosh at some point or a Linux system or just your Windows systems, there's this possibility that the drive itself is actually in a format which isn't compatible with Motherboard Boss Flashback. So when the drives are doing FAT32, they need to be in what is known as the MBR format. Most modern systems will try and format your drives in what is known as GPT or UEFI. That isn't compatible with BOSS flashing, so you can actually check your drives. If you've got a working Windows computer, you can plug this into your PC and see actually what format is on there. And also you can do something which is really handy and that is run the clean command. You can do that and then this drive will be basically back to its factory standards, at which point then you can do whatever you want with it. Ideally, obviously formatting it into FAT32. So just for you, I will show you how this is done. So let's plug this into the computer and uh, take a look. Okay, so we've plugged our USB flash drive in. Now this was actually used for a BOSS flash. I use this particular drive all the time. If anyone's wondering what drive I use, it will be linked in the video description. Uh, these SanDisk flare drives are great and I've never had a problem with them at all. So these are excellent. So if you wanted to basically make sure this drive is completely clean and ready to use and ready to be formatted, what you can do is go to the Windows start flag or just fire up a terminal as admin you'll get the user account control come up, so click on yes. And what we want to do is type in disk part, all one word, he says, and press enter. So when we get the disk part, we can do list disk, and this will tell us what drives are actually in your computer. Now be really careful with this tool because you can potentially nuke a drive which you don't want to. So in this instance, I know pretty well that my main system drive is one terabyte, so that shows up as 931 gigabytes. Our USB drive is 28 gigabytes. It's actually 32, but that is the usable space, 28 gigabytes. So in this instance, I want to choose disk one. And what we can also see here is the GPT. So our primary drive, our Windows drive, is actually in the GPT or UEFI format. If it doesn't have a star there, that means it's in the MBR format. So this drive is absolutely fine. And we know that because we've already used it. But if you're not too sure, we can actually clean the disk. So let's do select disk one, because that is our small drive. And it'll say there, disk one is now the selected disk. So if you want to erase it in its entirety, all you need to do, type clean. And there we go. Our drive is now cleaned. So now that's succeeded in cleaning the disk. Now we need to recreate the par file partition on there. So again, right click on your Windows start flag or just go into disk management. And you'll see there, you've got your drive, which is currently showing as unallocated because it doesn't know what it is. It's just a, a bare drive. So you can right click and choose new simple volume. Click on next, do the full size of the drive. You can assign it a drive letter if you want to. I'm gonna call it drive Z. And now we get the option to change the file system. So we'll choose FAT32. And where it says volume label, I would leave that blank and also perform a quick format. So obviously this is already erased, so there's no problems with actually creating a new partition. So there we go, that is done. Click finish. And after a short while, we should see our completely blank new FAT32 formatted drive. And just to confirm that, if we go into our drive Z, show more options, I'm going to choose properties. There we go, FAT32. Excellent stuff. So that is the drive now ready to be used as a USB BOSS flashback drive. Also other things to take into consideration is potentially you could have a hardware fault. Now it's not completely out of the question and generally most people get to this point of my PC has been fully built, they've turned it on and they've got no display on screen, which we've done kind of videos on that previously. But this is the first time that you'll know that your motherboard maybe doesn't recognize your processor or there is a potential hardware fault. So what I would suggest to do, even though it's an absolute pain in the ass, if you've been through all the steps already and it's still not working, there is actually a strong chance that you've got a hardware fault. So I would take the motherboard out of the PC, just the motherboard on its own with a power supply and a USB drive and try and do the BOSS flashback. If for some reason it still won't flash, even when it's just the board on its own outside of the case, with just your power supply and USB drive, there's a really strong chance that unfortunately your motherboard is uh, either faulty or has somehow been damaged during the build process, which is unfortunate, but again, it does happen. 
and that is why if you buy from things on like Amazon etc you get a really good warranty so potentially you could uh, get it exchanged so anyway I've probably waffled on for way too long but hopefully I've given you some information there and some things that you can try for yourself really this video is intended for our discord members so if you've come from a previous video and you've still got problems and we've said well have you done all these checks this is the video we're going to point you in the direction of so if you've come here from our discord thank you very much and uh, leave a comment in the video description and let us know if this has been helpful if we don't hear from you again hopefully we won't hear from you again because this will fix your problems and you can go on and use your pc but if for those of you that are watching this and you're still experiencing problems please feel free to reach out to us in that comment section below or like I've said previously, you can join our Discord and go into one of the technical support rooms and we'll try and help you the best we can. Well, I think that's going to wrap this video up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.